Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this lizard that measures in at 17 inches by roughly 10 inches across. It's going to be routed out on rough fencing wood. I've actually glued piece, two pieces together, just standard wood glue, clamped it overnight, and you'll see what we've got once I've removed the paper. So I just googled an image, lizard template, outline coloring pages and it just gave me a plain outline of a nice big lizard and literally all i did for the design on top there's lots of circles to take out but we'll stick at it the idea is to route out the center of these circles and route out the remaining area of the body at the same depth and then these smaller ones will just route around them and then we'll paint the full lizard himself we'll work out the colors near the time and then we'll do these just Fancy colours, nice yellows, red, blues, something to really stand out. We're going to go crazy, crazy on this one. So we've printed our template out. We've stuck it down with painter's tape. We've got the good old carbon paper underneath. And it is just a simple case of drawing around the old thing. Slow process. You could have done a nice plain lizard and just saved yourself a lot of trouble. But where is the fun in that? So we've drawn around it, like we just said. And there's our image nicely transferred onto the wood and you can just about see the joint there where we've joined the two pieces of rough fencing wood you can see what it's like at the back and for now it's still in place we'll see how it goes once we start routing it out if i'm not too sure once we've cut it out you can obviously get some screws and you can put screws into the side walls just to hold it together better same again down there put a bit of wood fill over the top we are going to paint over the top of this. There is biscuits and plugs and all sorts of different fancy devices that you can get. This person is about the second, if not the third piece that I've actually glued together. It's not one of my favourites. I'd like to do it on one solid piece if possible, but sometimes a project, you just can't do it. Another quick one, if you, once you've done your template, if you go around it quickly with a Sharpie pen around the area, that will actually soak through the wood a bit and that will give you Another template on the back, so you basically want to put it in the reverse order. So you get two for the price of one. That's just with a marker pen. So we've done that, we've got it all nicely done. The idea is to route out these centre bits and most of the surrounding area. And then we'll get a scroll saw with a nice spiral blade on. We'll talk about that near the time. Cut it nearly all out, just leaving it intact at the top and the bottom. Just so we have enough surface on to route out the rest of the surrounding area, if that makes sense. You could route it all out first if you wanted to. But obviously this section would be 3mm lower than that section. And I have done it once before with a scroll saw. But for me personally, I just find it easier to follow a nice line than trying to follow two different depths of 3mm in between. You'll see what I mean as this little video goes on. As always for me, I like to use these CNC bits. They do come in different degrees. You get 10s, 15s, 20s and 30s. That's literally just the angle of the cut on the end. They're very small. They come with a 3.175mm shaft on. You'll see there. This is a 20mm I believe, but there's not a lot in them. So it, they do take some working out. You need an adapter collet. This is an adapter reducer, call it 6.35. You slot your CNC bit into the end there. They will fit a Dremel without the adapter if you're using the router attachment on a Dremel. Put the dark section into your router. That's now a quarter of an inch. We'll set it to a three millimeters in depth. I get my little gauge. I just made myself something like that. That's it's the same thickness as your CNC bit. So we'll pop that in the router. And we'll set it to that one there. I think it's number two, to be honest. One and two. I mean, that's four millimetres, that's three millimetres. You could do four or three, it doesn't matter. And we'll set it to that depth. And route out all the lines, everything you need to do. With this little CNC bit, I will be tempted just to remove the centre of all those at the same time. Because they are such small pieces. So instead of swapping, we'll just take all that out with the CNC bit. And if it's not coming out too clever, we'll pop on. These end milling bits, these are also a favourite of mine. Same size shaft, 3.175mm. 
we'll get a nice small one that's going to fit in between our circles and we'll go pop this one into the adapter collet and take out the surrounding area with that the person myself i think most of this will just be done with our 20 mil cnc bit okay let's set this up set it to three millimeters and we'll start routing this one out Okay, you can see from that, that come out really easy. Basically, we moved all the centre of those with the CNC bit. No problem whatsoever. Now, you could drill these if you wanted to. There'd be a drill that size. I've actually got something on my Dremel at the moment. A carving bit. And you could have just gone down the centre of those with that if you wanted to. But I just prefer to use a CNC bit. Good practice for you to try and get as many circles as you can now it doesn't matter if they're not perfect we're going to go around this with a dremel and an engraving bit of some description maybe something like this and we'll just go inside and generally tidy it up and do all the back at the same time that's when we get there obviously right so we're still on the same cnc bit so we've removed all our inner ones now we basically just come back again with the router and start going around all these circles and around these little ones here like so and as we go along depending on how easy it's coming out we might be taking out all the clearance at the same time if not we will pop on one of the end milling bits okay let's start doing the rest of these circles right you can see from that we've gone around our all our circles now it's quite rough and nasty looking at this moment in time but the plan's going to schedule as we say so at this moment it's just a lot of circles rough and ready remember we are going to tidy this all up with a dremel and a router now this would all come out easy with the little cnc bit 20 degree remember today it's about to see it there there we go coming off really easy but as i have mentioned the end milling bits and i use these on all my projects to be honest fantastic also ebay and amazon they come with the same size shaft as mentioned before so i quickly just quickly just got a nice small one there we go and that just fits nicely in between these circles i'm going to go around and clear basically all the body up the arms Remember, I want to leave a little lip, a little edge, should I say, if you imagine down there. I will leave that section there. Now, you can route straight up to the line if you wanted to. But remember, I'm going to cut this out on a scroll saw, and that will give me two different levels. And I just find it a little bit awkward. I've done it once before. So, I just want to leave a nice pencil line so I can see that. We'll cut it all the way around with a scroll saw, and then we'll come back again with the same little piece we have here, and basically clear the remainder of the edging like so clear that out and it doesn't matter if we run over the we've got no concerns because basically this will all be scrap wood at either side are you with me so far good okay we'll pop this in the adapter collet if i just find it quickly so just in case we're moving that some come with these little barriers one and you just push that into the same end right up to that barrier set it to the same depth as one of those and we're good to go you can also get these pieces without the barrier on to show you one there so there's one with barrier one without it's exactly the same 
route a bit. Okay, we'll pop that one in, set it to that depth, and remove as much of this as we can, but without actually touching the line at the edge. Right, you can see from that, we've made it all the way around with the end milling bits. We've got the effect that we're looking for so far, so good. Notice we've left that little lip all the way around there. Just so I've got a nice line to follow with the scroll saw blade. Instead of actually routing a uh, scroll sawing up to where we've routed out. Just a little bit awkward, I've tried it before. I just prefer to do it this way. And remember, this is just the way that I do it. If it's going to be an hard way of doing things, I'm the one to pick it, that's for sure. So we're going to cut this out with a scroll saw. This will still be attached to the wood. If you notice there, we've drilled some pilot holes. Normally with the blade, you could just come in from the side and start cutting this out. But I want this surround to stay intact with the lizard. Because when we come with the router, just going to give some more room to work on. If you cut it out completely, when you come over here with your router, especially around those fingers, you've got no support, so you're going to be wobbling all over the place. It can be done, and I've done it myself, but I'm just trying to show you the easier way for those that's just starting out. So we've drilled what they call pilot holes. I literally just put two there. And because we are running off the wood there, I've done two there. So we will put the blade into this hole here. If I just find a blade quickly, I will be using spiral blades today. We will feed that blade into there, pop that on the saw, cut that out all the way around there to that hole there. We'll remove the blade, leave that little section in the middle there just to keep it intact. And then we basically start on this side and cut all this out all the way, all the way around to there. Come out with the blade and we just do that little section there. Because obviously we didn't want to cut across it because then all that piece would fall out. So they're a lot better once you've once I've actually cut it out with this, the blade itself. And just a quick one for those that are new to the scroll saw. You get three basic blades I'm going to call them. The first one is your pin blade. They come on your cheaper saws. And they're fantastic. They're well, they're okay. That will do this project no problem. You will struggle to get it into the pin holes here. So obviously you would need to get... Drill bigger holes for that to slot into because those pins will actually be in the way. Another blade that they like to use is the pinless blade. These are fantastic blades. They're used by bigger percentage of the scroll saw world. They also have no pins on. Good thing about that, you can do a smaller pilot hole. If you imagine if you wanted to cut in something really delicate inside, and you just don't have the space to drill a big hole put a pin blade into so that's definitely a good choice for people me personally i just like to use a spiral blade it's pinless so you can pop it into nice small holes like that one over there good thing about spiral blades they will cut in any direction so we could basically put this on the saw like so start start there i like to start always starting over here to be honest start there and we can just move the wood like that to get the cut whereas if you're using one of these other blades you would have to have that coming towards you always have the t facing wall towards you should i say and the one feels smooth on the way down and rough on the way up you'd have to cut that to that distance here then you'd have to turn the wood to cut down there turn the wood turn the wood turn the wood and there's a lot of turning and on bigger projects you will struggle to get that onto the base of the scroll saw. So I just prefer spiral blades. A lot of people don't like them. 
so there's less turning and it just lets you do bigger projects okay we've set this one up in the scroll saw we'll start cutting this one out and then we'll go back to the router and remove that little lip all the way around right we've got our blade in the scroll saw spiral blades they want to be the same as the other blades they want to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up that way you know you've got your teeth facing the right way with spiral blades obviously they do spiral all the way around so there is no front and back to a spiral blade you should have a nice ping ping sound like that once you've took up your tension at the back that way you know your blades got the right tension and we're ready to cut this one out okay let's cut this lizard out and we're back to the router side of things Right, we just about made it round with the spiral blade. We've cut it all out. To say there's two pieces of wood joined together, I could definitely tell the difference in cutting the two woods, even though it's come from the same place. This bottom half, cut, top half cut nice and easy. This one really struggled. I actually changed my blade halfway through. Now it could be because it's not quite flush. I don't know if you can see that. It's not as flat as it could be, but we'll see what it's like once it's cut out. But it's really nothing to be concerned about. I can show you the worst bit over here. You can see how ziggy zaggy that is, I'm going to call it. But I'm going to go around this with a sanding drum and straighten that off anyway. So just a rough cut to actually get the shape we want. All this will all be cleaned up. But uh, yeah, even with a new blade, I, did, I struggled today. I just don't know what it is. But we got round. You can see from the back. There's our lizard cut out. Eventually, I will be routing out a slit in here for hanging purpose. We'll show you that towards the end of the video. Right, so it's still in place. Remember, we've done it this way. So when we come on with the router, to remove those little lips, remember, it's got more of a surface for the router to run on. Whereas if you're trying to route over this little section here, should I say, you've just got a lot of pivoting and balancing. Whereas that extra bit of wood is going to help you out a little bit. I have done it without it and it can be done but for the new ones on the on the block keep as much wood for the router base to run on okay let's clear this out with the router we've still got it in from last time remember so we're literally just going to take off that little lip all the way around to be honest i did actually like the effect if i just pop that leg up a little bit i quite like that effect of that little lip staying on on some sections we've lost it completely so we're gonna to have to stick to plan a and remove it all okay let's remove that then i'll quickly get the saw again cut off these sections and hopefully we've got a nice shaped lizard when we come back for general tidying up Right, so we've gone all the way around with our router, we've removed all the edges, we've gone back on the scroll saw and just nipped off those little tabs that were holding it all together, and you can see from that, we've got the general shape that we're looking for, and there we have him, so we've released him from his surround, 
no problem. It's still rough and ready. But that doesn't bother me. Some of these cuts are just horrendous. I am not a scroll saw cutter, if that makes sense. I'm more of a router than a scroller. But I'll soon sort these out. There's good sanding drums. I like to use a flexi shaft like this on a Dremel. Just eBay specials again, nothing fantastic. And we'll go around, give this a nice tidying up, sort all this out. But then there's these circles. I like to use engraving bits. Same again, eBay. If you put in Dremel engraving bits, I just personally just get the cheap made in China specials and I've got no issues with those whatsoever. And we'll get one with a nice flat bottom on. Just find one there quickly, not that one. Nice flat bottom. And that just lets us get inside there and give it all a nice tidy up. We'll skim over with a mouse sander. Do a little bit of shaping, not a lot. This is not an engraving piece. Maybe we'll just take that edge off there all the way around. And it will look hopefully totally different again when we come back. It's still in one piece. I'm not going to bother with the screws. Originally I was going to put some screws in. I'd like to fed one in there. Just connect that bit there. A nice long one running through there. But it still seems fairly solid. So, so far, so good. Right, general tidy up time. Right, that's enough sanding down and general tidying up for me. In the end, we got a ball engraving bit and went for a stipple ripple effect on the full lizard itself. It's a slow process. I don't know if you can see it from there. We basically covered his full body with these little stipple effect. And all it is a case of putting your round ball piece into your flexi cable and dab, 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 dab. It's a slow, slow process, but you soon get the swing of things and it just does give it a nicer lizardy skin effect, if that makes sense. We're trying to get into focus here. You'll see better when it's all been painted. Good thing about that is any defects on the wood where you can't get in with a sander and it's look a bit rough and ready, you can basically just cover it all up with the dab, dab effect, as I'm going to call it. Right, next stage now, simply for hanging purposes, I always like to put a slit in the back of my project so we've got no nails or screws showing. And that, for that, I like to use a T-slot bit. Just turn around that slowly, quickly. It's a T-slot bit, like so. It has a quarter-inch shaft on it, and that will just fit straight into your router, no problem. It's quite an old one, this one. I must be ready for a new one by now. And this one is a 5 16 just see there, two seconds. Is it going to work? Just about see it. Quarter inch shaft and it's a 5 16. That was the smallest one I could find at the time. Now I like to have a bit of scrap wood, which I did a couple of samples for myself, and I use the same one every time. I know, excuse me, I know this one here is perfect. So we'll pop this in the router, we'll set it to that depth. You cut it in there, lower it down. Slide it across, literally slide it back again. And that makes a nice T-slot bit for your screws to go into. Obviously, depending on what size screws you've got, you'll get a bigger bigger slit. And that will go in there now like that. Put that into your fence. So you've literally just got the head of the screw showing. Pop that on there and it slides on really tight. And that will hold your project in place. So I'm just going to literally quickly just show you. I'm going to route a nice slit in this. I've got the angle right for what I want because I know when it's on this side of the shed I want it to sit like that. So I put my line more or less at the angle I need for it. Bigger projects you can obviously put two slits in no problem. Okay we'll quickly put a slit in the back of this and then we're on to the painting side of things. Right, we're heading towards the finishing line. 
We've got our slit nicely in the back. That's plenty for hanging with. No problem whatsoever with that. Paints I'm going to use today. Just cheap acrylic paints. I have Crawford and Black for mine. These are great little paints. I've used them basically on most of my projects. Add a little bit of water to it to make more like just so it soaks into the water, makes more of a stain than an actual paint itself. And the idea that we should paint the complete body. And then inside each one of these old just random colours, we're gonna really go over the top on this one. And then we'll give it a nice quick sanding over just to clear these circles again. And then we'll go ahead and paint these. Just random crazy colours. I have no idea how we're going to paint this. It's just one of those things we just let the brush take over. And we'll see what we've got at the end of the project. Okay, I'll go ahead and paint this. And we'll come back after we sprayed it with a bit of lacquer, varnish, crystal clear or something similar. And then this little project shall be over. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. Now I gave it four or five coats of a 151 clear lacquer. Dries really quick that. That's one of my favourites, or the crystal clear. And it's just enough to give it a nice shine and a little bit of protection with it going outside. Now it won't be the best finish that it does for my little projects that basically just end up on the side of my shed. Remember, we've routed out our slit in the back for hanging purposes and we joined two pieces of rough fencing wood together just using wood glue and nothing else. And that's still nicely solid, so I'm quite happy with that one. And there we have it. This little project is finished. Now we'll put them on the shed with the rest of those that are already on there. So just to recap, it's 17 inches by 10 inches. We routed out the circles with 20 degree CNC bits, the outer and the inner. And then we routed out all the remaining backer with n milling bits at a depth of three millimeters we tidied it all up with a dremel and some engraving bits and we put a little speckle effect on here with a ball engraver and then we painted it all with acrylic paints and sprayed it all with 151 clear lacquer and that's it this little project is finished just nice nice fun projects give it a go just enjoy yourself that's the main thing we're going to put this on the shed with the other ones. Thank you very much for watching.